Hello everyone and welcome back. Today I'm going to be starting a new decluttering series. It's been a year since my last one, so it's time to get in there and clean and reorganize and declutter of the things I'm no longer using. As always, I'm going to film a few parts so I can be more thorough and so that I don't get overwhelmed and get rid of things that I will regret later on. That's happened a few times before and it sucks. And this time around, I'm going to keep the box with all of the things I'm getting rid of so at the end of the series, we can look through it. And if you're curious where the decluttered products are going, they're going to be going to friends and family if they're not expired or too ratty. I do donate a lot of unused products, but they don't really take in used or slightly used products, which all of these are. So I'm going to be keeping those for friends and family. So before we get into part one of this series, I would love for you to subscribe if you haven't already, and let's get started. So here's an overlook of the first drawer. This one contains all of my base products. So primers, foundations, concealers, powders, and brow products. I feel like we should go in some type of order. So let's start off with glow boosters and primers. I keep my eye primers in this drawer, it just makes it a little bit easier. I'm going to be keeping all of these ones. So I have two of the Fenty Beauty eye primers. One of them is actually meant for my makeup bag, so I'll relocate that. My number one is the Fenty Beauty one. It's fantastic, especially for oily eyelids. The About Face one is great, especially if I'm going to be using a lot of cream shadows. I feel like they glide on top of this primer really well. I like the Rare Beauty Eye Primer because it does have some coverage without making my eyelids look creepy. It just corrects them, especially if I'm going for more of like a no makeup makeup look where I want more of a soft glam look and I want like a blank slate. And my favorite drugstore one is the NYX HD. It's really, really good. It's kind of a mixture of these two, I would say. I have three shades in my Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. I'm going to be keeping all three. I have the shades 1, 2.5, and 3. I like one for like kind of like a more intense glow, and this is really nice in the summer, and this is a nice shade for the winter if I want something more subtle. I'll also be keeping my two shades in the Auric Glow Lust. I have the shades Selenite and Pyrite, so winter and summer. I have these from Say Beauty, so this one's in the shade Star Glow and this one's in the shade Warm Glow. So it's the same thing, this one's just like a little smaller size. I'm going to keep this one, I'm going to get rid of this because it takes too much room in my collection and I never ever use this. This was actually featured in trying products I might declutter and I just I haven't used it since so I'm going to get rid of this. I have two shades in the e.l.f. Halo Glow Liquid Filter, shades 2 and 3, and I'm going to keep both. I can't seem to part with the glow boosters today. This is the Iconic London Radiance Booster in the shade Champagne Glow. I'm also going to keep that. And then I have the Glowy Rare Beauty Primer, which I do really like for an icy look because it's quite... It's like a unique kind of texture. It's super serum-y, but it has a very illuminating glow. That one's unique, I'm keeping it. Then I have some of my bronzy things. So I have the Jones Row Gel Bronzer, which I love to use in a variety of ways on its own, mixed in with my foundation and blushes just to make them more bronzy. I don't know, I like to use this in a ton of different ways. Same with the Clinique Sun Kissed Face Gelée. This is really cool to mix in with like your bronzer or foundation to make your bronzer tone. And it also stains your skin, so it just does not go anywhere. This was awesome on hot vacations. I love this product, it's so unique and cool. This one might be shocking, but I am going to get rid of my Milk Makeup Hydro Grip because I do have a smaller size and I never ever use this because of the e.l.f. power grips, as you can see. I use these far more than this. I've had this for like a year and I haven't used it more than five times, so I'm going to let that one go. But the power grips are amazing. As you can see, I need to repurchase them soon. I am going to let go of my e.l.f. liquid poreless putty primer. I don't really like it. I feel like it doesn't do the best at blurring or diffusing my pores. And I feel like it makes every foundation or skin tint or whatnot on my skin like look like it's sitting on top of it. Therefore, I never use this, I'm gonna let it go. And I'm just going to keep the rest here. I'm very strict when it comes to 
primers. So the ones that I have here are pretty good. So this is the Wet n Wild Impossible Primer. It does it all. It's really cool. This is the Iconic London Underglow Blurring Primer, which is an amazing combination with the blurring skin tint that they have. And this is the Blurring Primer from Rare Beauty, which I do really enjoy. I feel like this one does a ton more than the e.l.f. Liquid Poreless Putty Primer. I would like to reconfigure this. I'd like to have just like a glow booster and tan section and then primer section, but we'll see what happens in the end. I'll rejig this later, but for now I'll just put them away. This is just temporary. I don't like how that's looking, but now let's get into skin tints and foundations. Okay, I have far more foundations and skin tints than I even thought. This is crazy. Judging by how separated these are, I have not used these. Um, I can't even tell you the last time I touched these. I'm going to let this go, although it's a really nice formula. I like it. I just always have to like custom make my own shade because they're either too yellow or too pink for me. Um, this is the NARS Light Reflecting Foundation. I feel like there's just other things I prefer more over this one. So I'm going to let it go. I have three shades in the Rare Beauty Skin Tint. I am going to get rid of one shade. One of them is just way too light for me. I think that's 14W. I have 20W and 22W. Those are my two shades. 14 is just way too light. But I'm keeping 20 and 22. I have three shades in the Clinique Even Better Clinical Foundation. I'm actually going to get rid of all three of these because the Clinique Even Better is so much better than the clinical version. This one tends to get weird on me at the end of the day. This one looks good on me at all hours, no matter how long I'm wearing it for. It looks flawless all day. I just prefer this one's wear. I like how this one has a bit more of a blurring finish. This one tends to look a little bit more thick on my skin. I'll always go for the foundation that looks thinner on me. I just really, really like the Even Better makeup. This one is just meh for me now. I used to love it so much, but that's before I even tried this one. But I'm going to be keeping all three shades in this one. I have some for summer and winter and like in between. I really, really like this formula. This is the Makeup by Mario foundation. This is actually one of my favorites. I find it to be quite unique because it has a nice pearl in there. It makes my skin look really, really dewy and it kind of gives like a no makeup makeup vibe, but also like a very flawless look. I don't know if that even makes sense, but it just makes my skin look flawless. It gives my skin like a very strobe-like effect without it being very greasy or slippy feeling on my skin. It wears really pretty. I really am all about it. I have two shades of the Patrick Ta Foundation and Powder Duos. I'm going to keep both. I have a new one and a quite loved one here. I have the shades Light 2 and Light 3. I love this stuff. It's incredible. The cream is so full coverage. A little bit goes a long way and the powder is so nice and blurring. Very good product here. I can't believe I have this one still rolling around in my collection. This is the Danessa Myricks Yummy Skin Serum Foundation. It looks beautiful, but it can be very heavy. A little bit of it goes a long way and if you use too much, it's just like a mess. And this one breaks me out like crazy. I get so reactive. Every time I use this, I'll wake up with little tiny zits all over my face. They're very, very small. They're not like deep ones. They're just very surface level ones. And that means that this product is just not a good match for me. I think I kept it for so long because I just love the tube. It's squishy in the middle here and you can just squeeze out the product like that. I think it's a really cool tube, but it just does not work. I'm getting rid of it. It's a very similar situation with this one. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Foundation. Same thing happens to me as the Danessa Myricks one, so I'm going to let this one go too. This is the Westman Atelier Stick Foundation. I actually really like this one. I don't love stick foundations often, but this one's really nice. It feels really melty. It doesn't feel too waxy. It doesn't break me out, doesn't feel too heavy, and it doesn't take a long time to blend out. So I'm keeping this one. I have two shades in the Estee Lauder Double Wear. I'm going to keep one the one with the pump, which is the shade 2N1. 
2 and 0 is just a little bit too yellowy or something on me, so I'm going to let go of that shade, but I'm keeping this one. I have two shades in the Fenty Beauty East Drops. I have 8 and 5. I'm going to just keep number 5. I don't use this that often anymore. Um, and if I want to darken this, I'll just add a little bit of my bronzing drops if I want to. So yeah, I'm happy with that decision. The product that kind of replaced my love for the Fenty Ease Drop is the Iconic London Super Smoother Blurring Skin Tint. This one's incredible. It's a lot more refined um, in the blurring texture, and it also feels thinner on my skin. I love this one. I use um, Warm Fair. I have three shades in my MAC Studio Radiance Face and Body. I have the shades C1, N1, and N0. I'm going to keep all three. That's one product I always go back to. I also have three shades in my Armani Luminous Silk. I have the shades 5, 4.5, and 5.9. I kind of rotate all between these ones. Um, this is a fantastic formula. It's very, very refined blurring, but it also has a really nice luminosity to it, and it's so thin on my skin. It always looks good. This is one I'll go to if I have a lot of texture problems. I feel like it just solves my issues there, and it looks so good with so many different products in so many different lightings and at all hours of the day. This is the Glossier Skin Tint, and I feel like it's old as the hills now. I rarely ever use this. If I use something like this, I'll go to the MAC Face and Body. I prefer this formula a lot more. I feel like you can control it better and you can get more out of the MAC one because you're able to emulsify it with your fingers and you can get more coverage out of it, whereas this one is just like water, um, which has its place sometimes. I use this more so as like a mixing medium. I just, I haven't done that in a long time, so I'm going to let it go. And I don't really see myself using the skin tint ever since their foundation came out. This foundation is so good, I can't reiterate that enough. It just gives like the perfect foundation look. If you want something a little bit more on the glowy side without it being uncomfortable, oh my gosh, it's so nice. I'm going to be keeping this for sure. Then I have some of my classic favorites, like the Dior Forever Skin Glow is one of my top favorites. Same with the YSL All Hours Foundation. This is kind of like the more matte version of this. This one gives a lot more glow, whereas this one has a little bit of a glow, but it looks more um, velvety, like a nice skin finish, like a true skin finish. Really beautiful products here. These are some of my go-tos for events or days. I know I want like a flawless look all day. This is another one I have not reached for in a long time. I was a huge fan of it in the beginning and then I just kind of, it just kind of lost its magic for me. It doesn't really compare to other things here. I'm also going to let go of this Danessa Myricks foundation. This is the Vision Cream cover. I haven't used it in a few years and it's already like a couple years old. I feel like it's verging on expiring and I just never reach for it anymore. So bye-bye. This is one of my top favorite reliable foundations. It just always looks amazing. I have three shades in this, 1N10, 2N22, and 1N14. So kind of my winter, my summer, and my mid-tone shade if I want to like mix. I have my Rose Ink Skin Enhance. I still like to use this once in a while. It's very blurring and it gives like a perfect kind of no makeup makeup effect. I really like it still. And something very similar is the Chanel Le Beige. And this one gives a very similar effect, but just with a lot more coverage in comparison to the Rose Ink. This one is one of the best formulations I've tried. It's so fun to use as well if you don't get freaked out by the little pigment bubbles but I really like it, so I'm gonna keep that around. And the last one I have in my collection is the L'Oreal True Match Hyaluronic Tinted Serum. I'm going to keep this one. I love this one, except for its packaging. Otherwise, it's really nice. It gives a very similar effect to the Makeup by Mario. Okay, I was able to condense my foundations quite a bit. I used to have a whole other area like this full of them, so that's awesome. Now it's time to tackle concealers. So 
So in this section I actually kept concealers and color correctors. So starting with the e.l.f. color correctors, I'm going to be keeping all four shades. They're actually really great quality. The blue one I also enjoy mixing into foundations that are a bit too warm for me. They're just really great ones. They're very thin leaning but very powerful in tone, but they're not so colorful that they're going to shine through your concealer. I'm also a really big fan of the Huda Beauty faux filter corrector. I use the shade pink pomelo and it's very very effective. I love this one under my eyes. It's a really nice peach. This is one of my little treasures. This is still the Becca one but thankfully Smashbox took over uh, this formulation and they sell it now. So this is a really great one because it has a little bit of a shimmer in there so it's really awesome at brightening up your under eye and making it look really nice and hydrated and just it gives a really unique finish. It's awesome. I have three shades in the Fenty Beauty eye brightener. I don't know if I need all three shades. I much prefer the Rare Beauty eye brightener now. This one right here, which while I'm covering this, keeping both of these shades. Love them. I feel like I can control this one a lot better than the Fenty Beauty eye brighteners. But with that being said, I'm going to keep the shade Melon, which is a really nice kind of peachy brightening color. But I'm going to let go of these two other shades, um, Butter and golden ivory. I have two shades in the Clinique Even Better concealer. I feel like I just prefer other ones. This one doesn't really strike me as that unique in comparison to the other ones I'm looking at fondly right now, so I'm going to let this one go. One that's kind of comparable, reminds me quite a bit of this in packaging, is the Physician's Formula Butter Glow Concealer, and I much prefer this formula. It's a lot thinner, and it wears a lot better throughout the day. Ooh, this one's one of my top, top ever favorite, the LYS Triple Fix Full Coverage Brightening Concealer. This one's like an eye brightener and concealer in one. And my, oh my, does this ever have a phenomenal formula. I've been raving about this one for years and honestly, I'm going to continue. <laughs> it's so good. I'm going to get rid of this Danessa Myricks Vision Cream Cover. This is actually just in wand form. It's as old as the other one and it comes in this little packaging. I feel like it's just a little old now, so I'm going to let that go. Now we're gonna go through some of my favorite for spot correcting. This also looks really good under the eyes. This is the NARS Potted Concealer, but this is one of my favorites to spot conceal because the finish is so matte, but it's so creamy in consistency, so it doesn't really exaggerate the look of um, say like my, my pimples or anything. It's refining, it's very corrective, they're really awesome. Same with these. This is a very similar formula. This is the K de Po, but this comes in stick form. Very similar texture to the NARS. This one's just a lot finer and it's like powdery texture. Um, I like to use just the tiniest amount of this on my most visible blemishes. I also like to use this as a foundation once in a while since a little bit of this stretches a long way. I have two shades in the Faux Filter from Huda Beauty. I'm going to get rid of one shade. I use the shade Honey more often. Cotton Candy is just a little bit dark and I don't like its tone as much as this one. As you may notice, this is one of my top favorite concealers. It's so good. This is the Tower 28. They sent me two shades in PR and I recently picked up two more because I just need it to match me at all times. I also like to use this one as a foundation, so gotta keep that. I have the shade that I've been using the most right now is DTLA, but the one I used in the summer was K-Town. I also have IE and EP. I have these two Dior concealers. I'm actually going to be getting rid of the Dior Forever Skin Correct. This one's a little bit too thick for my liking these days. I much prefer this version right here. This one's a newer addition. I'm actually going to let it go though. I like this side, like the liquid concealer side. is It's quite nice, um, but I don't really like the color correcting stick on the other side. At first I thought it was very similar to the Becca, but this one's almost like an actual highlighter that you can put on your cheek and glow all day, you know? It's just a little bit much for me, so I'm going to be passing that on. This is one I often forget about, but it's actually pretty good. This is the Milk Makeup um, Future Fluid. I really enjoy its texture. I don't really like the packaging. It's a bit thick for my liking. I prefer like the slimmer style we're used to seeing, but the applicator is really nice. I like how it has this cone shape, so it's really nice to like shove in the inner corner of the eye. 
Um, I'm going to keep it. I do enjoy it. This one has been on the rocks for a while now. I went really back and forth with it and I think I'm going to let it go for real now. I've used it a few times this week actually just to really test it out. Um, I used it on the days where I just needed to brighten up my under eyes and that was it and I just feel like it makes my under eyes look a little too highlighted or scaly in a way. It's kind of weird but I don't love it so I'm getting rid of that one. I'm also getting rid of the Beautiful Skin Radiant Concealer from Charlotte Tilbury. Um, I feel like there's a few good qualities about this. I like its texture and stuff, but I have found it's not the most reliable. Some days I feel like it looks like it's sitting on top of my under eyes, whereas others really sink in. It just feels unreliable. But let's talk about the most reliable. This is one of my top, top favorites and most recommended concealers. It's the NYX Bear With Me. It's... I can't even begin to tell you how phenomenal this one is. Uh, I love to use this as a foundation under my eyes. It's amazing. It's really hydrating and rich, but it's not too thick, so it doesn't crease and it doesn't enhance anything. It just looks amazing and it wears amazing. And it also is awesome for like more humid or hotter climates. This is what I wore in Europe when it was extremely, extremely hot. This one just feels kind of mad to me. This is the Essence Keep Me Covered. I tried this a few times. It's just not really my favorite. It feels a little too paint-like to me. I feel like it's a little drying under my eyes. I just, I don't find it to be that spectacular. On the other hand, this is one of the most spectacular concealers I have, and it has been for years. This is the Lancome All Over. Amazing, 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 amazing. This is another one that kind of gets forgotten by me all the time. It's the Bare Minerals Complexion Rescue. I know it looks good under my eyes, it's just one that I never reach for, so I feel like I could go without it, so I'm gonna trust my gut here, I'm not just gonna keep it because it is nice, I just, I know it's not going to be in the rotation anymore, so I'll let it go. This is another one of my favorite concealers and one of the best from the drugstore still. I have the pink one in the shade 160, which is awesome, especially if I'm wearing like pink blush or I want that pink under eye look. And, but my normal shade is 120 and I love them. I've gone through so many, so many tubes of this throughout the years. This is the Ilia concealer. I'm going to get rid of it today. I never use it. It just doesn't spark any joy to me anymore. This isn't my favorite concealer anymore, but it's one that I like to compare a lot of formulas to. I feel like this has a really good formula. I don't love its shade range. I feel like the tones are quite odd um, and I don't like how it lasts throughout the day or how it lasts in my collection. They tend to get a weird smell as we all know now but I like to get newer formulas and test it compared to this because the formula is really cool. It feels more like a serum eye gel instead of a concealer and I have found many that kind of compare to this. I'll pull some that actually have a similar texture but kind of like a better wear. These are the ones that I kind of constantly compare to the Kosas. This one's the most similar, the NYX Bear With Me. I would say the Triple Fix is also quite serum-like. This one is similar in texture, but it has a lot more coverage. And I would say that the Physician's Formula is much thinner, but it gives me the same kind of eye gel feel. With all that being said, I'm going to keep this just to like compare it to my collection. And then the final one I have is a major keep. This is the Makeup Forever HD Skin. It's so good. As you can see, I went through quite a bit of it in the last few months. This is my favorite day-to-day, -day, especially if I'm not wearing any foundation. It's really nice. It's like a really buildable concealer, which is cool. It can look like an eye brightener or like a full coverage concealer, depending on how much you build it up. It's a really nice formula too. It has kind of like a powdery feel to it, so it sets down gorgeously. I don't understand how hairs get in everything. It's like you'd think I brush my hair right into my drawers. I don't understand. I'm so happy to be cleaning and organizing this collection right now. And you might wonder why I store some things upside down and some things right side up. It just depends on which side is more recognizable to me. And there we are! What? Oh my god, all my concealers and foundations fit in this one bin. That is so awesome. I'm going to quickly go through my brow stuff. I recently did this. I purged of like my redhead stuff, but I'll just take a quick gander. So 
So Brow Lift from e.l.f. I have the Kosas Brow Pencils, the Brow Pop and the Brow Pop Nanos as well as two shades in the brow gel. I have some of the NYX Lift and Snatch brow pencils, or I mean, pens. <laughs> I actually remember I don't really like the Melt Cosmetics brow gel. It feels a little bit too gluey. Same as the Milk Brow Lamination Gel. I don't like this one. I feel like it gets a little bit white in my brows in comparison to the Rare Beauty, but I really enjoy their brow pencils. They're so nice. And I like their Perfect Brow Pen too. It's very comparable to the NYX Rare Beauty Brow Pencil, which is my go-to right now. The Dior Brow Pencil, which is a very nostalgic, but I love that product still. The Essence Clear Mascara, which I like to use as a brow gel or like a flyaway tamer. This is the Nabla Brow Pen situation. I have the Huda Beauty Small Brow. Oh, that's actually almost empty. I have like two more uses out of that. I like that. And the Brow Powder from Rare Beauty is really awesome. I can feel myself getting tired, so I think powder is going to be the last one for today's declutter. This is the Fenty Beauty Blotting Powder. I actually don't really love this as a blotting powder. I feel like it doesn't refresh my makeup in a very flattering way, so I'm going to let that go. Ooh, this one's so good. This is the e.l.f. Prime and Stay Powder. It's so nice and very comparable to a few here. Here, this one from Charlotte Tilbury and the LYS. Very comparable to that. They're really good. You get that refined, super blurred out finish. It's great, but this one's $4, so. But with that being said, I'm going to keep these three options. These are the Jones Road ones. I really like the pink one. The white one's really nice too. The pink is very pigmented though, so I like to mix in a little bit of the white to calm it down and make it a pink that's better for my skin tone. I'm going to keep it for those reasons. I do not like this powder. This is the Laura Mercier Ultra Blur. Not a fan. I'm getting rid of it. I feel like it doesn't really do much for me. I'm also going to be letting go of the Rare Beauty one because I feel like this one's just a little bit too shimmery for me and it's not really long wearing on me at all. I loved it in the beginning, but I feel like there's other powders that last on me better. I feel like I get quite oily throughout the day when I wear this one. Um, I think this is such a pretty initial look on the skin, but it just it's just not long wearing. I have four shades in the Huda Beauty. This is one of my favorite setting powders. I have Sugar Cookie, Pound Cake, Cherry Blossom Cake, and Cupcake. My favorites are Cherry Blossom, Cupcake, Pound Cake, and Sugar Cookie. So, hope that helps. If you're wondering where my Givenchy powders are, they're pulled to the side for a roundup because those are new to my collection. Um, but those will be in this section soon enough. So now I have the Kosas Cloud Set in two shades. I have Feathery, which is my go-to shade, and Breezy, which is broken? <gasps> it's broken! <gasps> what happened to you, my child? This is the shade Breezy, which is a bit yellow on me, so, and broken. I was going to go into this one knowing I was getting rid of it, but um, now that it's broken, it's like an ultra confirmation, uh, but that's sad. But the shade Feathery works for me all year round. These two give me very same, same, but different brand vibes. They're very similar in texture and in finish. This is the Wet n Wild Bare Focus Clarifying Clarifying Finishing Powder, and this is Annabelle Perfect Matte. I, like, I do really enjoy both, so. They're very blurring and they cut a lot of the shine, which is sometimes useful. Same with this one, honestly. This is the Essence Brighten Up. I like this one because it has more of like a brightening effect because it has a little bit of a yellow tone to it. But this one's nice under the eyes as well as on the face, so I'm going to keep that too. And this one's a classic favorite of mine. This is the Pat McGrath Labs Blurring Under Eye uh, Powder. I haven't used this in a long time because I feel like I used it so much on my channel. People were getting annoyed, but I should bring it back because it's so good. Now I'm going to rejig this section. I feel like I can do primers and glow boosters now and then powders.
By the way, this does bug me, but for the sakes of versatility, it's gonna just have to work. My mic is pointing the other way. It's not meant for me to shoot this way, but hopefully you can still hear me a little bit. Here is the final first drawer. It looks so much cleaner. I was able to put all my mirrors and stuff over there. So now I have my brows, my powders, glow boosters and tanning stuff, um, primers, concealers and color correctors, and my foundations and skin tints. And here's everything I decluttered today. Part two is going to be wild. Oh God. Yeah, I'm too tired for that today. Cannot do that. And that concludes part one of my decluttering series. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.